Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lena Norms. Uh, it's nice that you are here. Uh, I make videos about books, social change, growing up and what not. And I realise that this time of year is the time of year that if you're like, you're in year 12, you're coming to the end of your exams, you're thinking about year 13 and all, everything that it brings. And for those people who want to go to university, they're thinking about what universities they should apply to and what they need to do between now and then to wiggle their way in. I'm no expert in getting into a university and I'm not gonna make a video about how to get into Oxbridge because I never applied and I never was eligible or had any drive to go. But going to university, uh, moving university for my masters and then having subsequent, com subsequent conversations with so many other people that have had experience at university, keeping in touch with my lecturers from university, I've realised that there's a lot of things that I didn't know when I was applying that I wish I had. So here are a few of them. These are things to consider they're points to ask questions about, they're things to research yourself. But again, it's frustrating because if you don't have experience of parents going to university, my parents are really helpful. My mum didn't go to university and my dad got a university degree at a college. So it's very different. And also if you don't have a school that is like really trained in trying to get people into universities or, or is very thorough about showing you how, it can be really invisible to people. It can be weird and I applied to university um, on my own I didn't apply when I was at school so I didn't get that kind of support from the school from applying and it was just so confusing and I'm glad I feel like I made really good choices but half by accident <laughs> so here are some things to consider now here's a big one that they don't tell you I went to a Russell Group University for my masters and that I went to Aberystwyth for my undergrad um, I've got videos on how I felt about my experience at Aberystwyth, you can click here, but like, spoiler alert, very positive. And there is a thing, depending on the resources and the organisation of the university, and sometimes on their reputation and how important they think their lecturers are, um, that they kind of wait to how much time they actually give you with the lecturers, which in my opinion is what you're really paying for, is face-to-face -face, uh, interaction and time with those experts. So Aberystwyth, I was taught by qualified lecturers who were doing active research and had years and years of experience from day one. Like they were the people that were my personal tutors, they were the people that delivered the lectures, they were mainly people that delivered the seminars where we discussed the work. They were completely present in the whole thing. It was only when I came out of Aberystwyth and had conversations with other people, chatted to lecturers and stuff that I realised that that wasn't the case at every university. And not that it's a bad thing, but I think it is an explicit choice that you should be um, aware that you're making. So at a lot of other universities, and from what I've heard, this tends to be how high how high ranking they are in the league tables, They won't, you won't really have any interaction with actual lecturers until second year at least. So a lot of your seminars will be led by PhD students that are still learning, who are quite young. Your lectures might even be delivered by those people too, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it is a, cho it is a choice that you're making. Uh, and it's one that people are often not told that they are. And, and that's frustrating to me. Um, so it's a really important question to ask when you go to Omen Days or you're looking at universities, you know, at what stage will I get taught exclusively or the majority of the time by a lecturer, by a person who's had years and years of experience explaining these kind of concepts. And I, I did have a few PhD students overseeing seminars and that was like good and useful, but I can't imagine an undergrad university experience without having access and feeling comfortable and getting to know um, those qualified lecturers um, who really introduced me, especially when there's such a huge gap for a lot of people. There was a huge gap for me between A-level English, which is what I studied, um, English literature and and university. It was, it was really scary. And to have somebody who'd been teaching for like 20 years and could explain these concepts in about 20 different ways if you couldn't work out what they were talking about was really valuable. Uh, and I'm really glad I had that and I can't believe other people didn't get that. Another thing to consider is not just your university's uh, stakes in the league tables, uh, but also most universities are required to do surveys and publicly display results on student happiness. <laughs> I think now that we have more understanding of the link between mental health and performance, uh, it's really important to consider how happy and supported and um, well looked after the students have been at this university before you to assess whether you will be performing at your best at the university you pick. For instance, when you go to an open day, a university isn't gonna tell you that they have the highest suicide rate for universities in the country, but it's readily available information and it's really good to know. Do they have well-funded student support services? Can you find evidence 
that people used them and they found them beneficial. You also don't know what's going to happen to you during those three years at university. You don't know what you're going to go through. Um, hopefully it's positive, most of the time it is, but say in, in the first year of university, one of my really, really good close friends uh, in first year, his 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 mum and his sister just died, like in in the second term of university, and it was huge. And having a university that was understanding and supportive made all the difference to whether he could stay or not. And I've heard and witnessed lots of stories like that where people go through these huge life changes. Um, that are outside of the curriculum and you want to make sure that when you're going through something, your university and the lecturers within it aren't adding to that. Again, you need to ask questions about their attitudes and their policies towards letting you do internships and work experience while you're at university. A lot of lecturers are there because they care about the subject and they want you to do well and they also want you to be employed afterwards. But it's worth bearing in mind that they are academics. They are also to some degree preparing you, preparing you for PhD and to be lecturers like them. So there's not always that cognitive link for some lecturers between your really quite urgent need to get as much experience as possible while at university and so that you can live and survive after you leave and doing those internships and work experience things while you're there. So it's, it's worth asking the questions, like do you have a policy around that, especially for third years? Do you take marks off for special circumstances if you need to take two weeks off to go and do a big opportunity or internship that will lead to a job do you how do you like how do you, do you help people apply for internships these are all interesting questions to ask and if they don't have ready answers that's already a red flag i'm personally really passionate about that i think it's really important and i've heard some great stories and i've heard some horror stories so it's it's worth asking that you know even when you're not even in first year ask it before third year are you chill with this also consider the kind of place you're moving to for me moving from coventry which is the biggest busiest, 10th ten biggest city in the UK, to Aberystwyth, which is a tiny 14,000 populated um, town by the sea in rural Wales, was incredible for me. I wanted that small town vibe that, like, some people find that isolating, but I found it really liberating in a way that I could focus and concentrate. Um, but consider how your environment will affect your study. Like, do you thrive in a city environment? Would you like a campus experience so you can meet people and feel part of a community? Or would you rather have something that isn't campus based? Do you feel the need to be close and accessible to your family? Do you feel that deep down it might be better if, if there was six hours between you and your family just so that you can grow as a person and become an individual? Um, these are all interesting questions to ask and I think sometimes people uh, become, have this huge imposter syndrome about getting into university that as soon as they're offered a place somewhere, they'll just pick the person with the highest score in the league tables. And it doesn't mean that you are gonna perform at the rate of the highest performing um, student i'm also like you have to bear in mind that a lot of these top universities have top students that have been coached from a young age had personal training in their subjects and will perform at a really high level because they were already set to do that before applying and not to say that oxbridge or big universities aren't going to set you up incredibly for a very successful academic experience but it's okay to be a medium-sized fish in a medium-sized pond because you'll still come out with a first. People, people at every university get firsts. It's not an exclusive thing. And, and again, I think it, depending on your industry, the reputation of some universities is becoming less and less important, especially as people have conversations about social mobility and diversity. It, it's not always gonna be worth three years where you don't feel like you are being looked after or fit just to be able to put that university name on your cv i think growing into personal skills getting really good at your discipline and working hard in your lectures and being able to focus um, on your degree having a well-rounded uh, personality and and other hobbies and experiences are all key parts of being employable when you leave so make sure that wherever you pick you feel like that can happen also consider what your passions are passions keep you sane they're good for your mental health and doing hobbies that aren't related to your degree is a really key part of becoming a person so if you are really passionate about musical theater or bird watching or larping or debate society um see if there is one at your university, check what it's like. There'll often be evidence on the internet about how active those groups are. They'll have Facebook pages or blogs where they've shared what they've been doing. And like, that's all really important to research as well. And if you don't have a hobby, that's amazing. I joined five societies in first year. It meant that I experimented and met lots of different kinds of people and really like diversified my um, 
friendship circle from the people I was used to being around, which was incredible. So don't worry if you don't have RB, you don't need to look it up. But it is useful looking at how active the student union is and how many societies there are and how active they are. And then finally, this is for people who are applying for masters, really. I don't know if this happens at undergrad, but it definitely happened to me at masters level. Uh, when I started my masters, I was really interested in publishing and thinking about that, but part of me also really loved to study. I'd really enjoyed writing my undergrad dissertation. I love the academic discipline of English literature and I was kind of thinking about doing a PhD. When I got to my chosen master's university, after a few months we were asked to write our dissertation proposal. So I wrote one about the depiction of disability in circus and freak show um, literature and I wrote a proposal for it, I did some research, I read some books, gave my proposal in and for those of you who don't know like if you are doing a PhD you pretty much do need to do a dissertation at master's level so they can see what you've done and it's a huge part of your application process for a, a PhD and I was told that my dissertation uh, proposal wasn't picked and I was like sorry what what do you mean pick wheels picked and it turns out that <laughs> at a lot of these masters um, courses after you've given them quite a lot of the money um, it's revealed that you don't necessarily get to do a dissertation as part of your masters they get put into a pool and because lecturers are very busy and important um, they pick out the ones they feel like overseeing and if there isn't somebody who feels like they're an expert in your field my field being just contemporary literature um, <laughs> or somebody who has the time or feels like it you just don't get to do a dissertation and for me that was a bit heartbreaking because I was like is there something wrong with my proposal Should I do it again was it just not good enough and they were like no it was a perfect level we you just you know we just couldn't find anyone for you so sorry um and and you don't get a chance to redo it you don't get a chance to reapply and that was a really um frustrating part of my master's experience because it actually did cut me off from being able to a PhD or at least I'd have to go away and somehow fund myself for like another year two years to write an independent dissertation without the resources or the university uh, support so like <laughs> it's something to be aware of like I'm not even I'm not even mad about it now but like it was it's frustrating that that information is not made obvious to you when you sign and it is really really important question to ask if you are thinking about doing a PhD um, because the adults always don't have it down that is what the overarching um, message of this video I want to be is the adults haven't always sorted it out. You were made to feel like a child when you apply to university. You go to these open days and you're kind of fielded through like you're in year six or something. And it's sometimes a place we put ourselves in, but like you're kind of made to feel like, here are the four or five questions you ask. They're all the questions you need to ask. Don't worry about everything else. The adults have it sorted. The adults don't have it sorted. <laughs> um, so always ask as many questions as you can. I also paid attention to Aberystwyth University because I missed their open days from my memory. Uh, and because I didn't think I was gonna go to uni and I was kind of a bit lost and on my gap year and was like, oh, I think I'm just gonna get a job. And um, they took the time to meet with me in person I came up for the day and they showed me around individually. I had like an hour and a half with one of the top lecturers and, and my mum and we just sat there and I, I, he let me ask any question I wanted for an hour and a half. Um, and like ha ha that kind of vibe as well is really important. Like how, it's an interview for both of you. How, how much are they trying to get you in? Uh, I did go to an open day at another university and felt so unwelcome even though I was supposed to be the guest um that it was just um so weird and like I'm so thankful that I found a university that does see the student university um relationship as transactional like I give a bit to you we're gonna give a back bit back to you because we're charging you for this experience <laughs> um so yeah th they're my thoughts on things to think about when you're applying for university I hope for those of you who are applying that was helpful I graduated in 2013 from my masters yeah so I that's that's them's the breaks that's it was a while ago now I think all the questions that I've suggested are relevant but do do your own research do think about it yourself um but as I said this video is supposed to be you don't know what you don't know. Now you know what you don't know, so you can ask the questions and find out for yourself. If you have been to university or you're at university and you have some learnings uh, that you'd like to suggest to people applying, um, please do leave them in the comments because that's really important too. The more of a wealth of experiences and resources we get down there, um, the easier it's gonna be for people to work out what's right for them and help them because 
make university accessible and also easier to understand because why? Thank you so much for watching. This video is made possible um, by The Gumption Club. If you would like to get a free poetry collection from me and learn more about it, the link is downstairs. Here are some other videos I made about university if you would like to watch those. And I'll see you in my next one, I guess. Rock's not, rock's not out.